Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through how I added searching to our application. So let's get into it. So if I go into my little application here and I do something like this, I search for foo, we see that hey there's this search results section here with a bunch of messages that are matched against the term foo. And since this is the username of this like of this user, you can see that it matches pretty much everything. But if I do something like, oh my god, it's just going to match the stuff that is actually text specific. And then we have things like, say, searching for alone, which is, hey, that's this term here where I sent this message to, like, the foo user sent a alone message to the foo user. So there should only be one instance of that. Now, if I, on the other hand, go over to another user and I do something like I search for bar, well, then I can get all the things that are referencing bar somehow. But if I search for alone, you'll see that I don't actually find the alone term in my search results because those are specific to, well, to the, like, to the foo user. Let's just go back over there. You see that this, like this, you know, it makes sense, right? You shouldn't be able to search for somebody else uh, else's private messages, and you actually need to be a member of a given channel to see that. So here, for example, I'm miss, I am in the channel foobar with this user, and if I search for foobar, I find foobar references, but I don't find the foobar message. If I, on the other hand, do foobar here. I see the full bar message because I'm actually a member of this channel. So that's the basic functionality of it all, right? So let's walk through some stuff. So first and foremost, we have added Elasticsearch to our dependency, a client to handle queries because when it comes to doing like proper real like production level searching, it is a very, 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 very hard problem to solve and I don't think, uh, for the most part, you will have use, usage, like you will see people use Elasticsearch for this for the most part. It is uh, probably one of, if not the best database for this sort of stuff, unless you want to implement it yourself. And I don't really recommend that because it's actually very, very hard to make a good search engine. And if we scroll through here, you see here that I've added some stuff. So basically when we update a message, we will simply take in the message and we will grab this service here, which is called the search service and just update that message. Same thing goes for deleting a message. We will simply take the ID of the message and delete the message because we're going to have two storage systems now. So we're going to have storage for in MongoDB where we store our actual application data and then we're going to store searchable content or searchable documents in Elasticsearch. Now this is a bit of a security problem here which it's something I'm not going to touch so much on that because I'm not going to put this into production but something we should be aware of here is that deleting a message on a socket well this well, just willy-nilly is a bit of a security issue because frankly anybody could send this message with an ID to our socket here and we don't know if the person who is sending this is actually the owner of this message so in theory you know a malicious user could start deleting stuff from our search database just because they could um, just because you know they want to do something well which is probably hilarious to them but not so effic efficient for our other users and then yeah you can save a message here like just saving a message in your search service and I also included a search routes or routes for searching and let's move on. So here we see in our services JS file where we bootstrap all of our services. We have the search service and I, in, I import Elasticsearch. I instantiate our client, which is going to just, well, since we don't have a URI specified, we're simply going to use the default. And then we create our search service and we add the client and the channel service to our new search service. And then we export it. And we can see here that in my channel service, this is the main, this is the reason why I actually want the channel service to be part of this. I've added a function called get channels users user is in. Well, might want to make that a nicer name, but that's basically what it's going to do. The user ID is going to be taken in, and we're going to simply go through all of the channels where this user ID is found. Like so, we just find all the channels and we return the IDs of those channels as the response. So we can figure out, okay, 
this user is in these channels. And here we have something we call message search results view, which is basically just a wrapper. This is the view that we're going to send to the client. And basically what we're going to do is that we're going to give in a search hit. And this is, this is basically what Elasticsearch is going to send us, which is just a, a object that contains some information. And on that object, there's a source property, which holds the information that we actually stored in the search in the database. And then all we're going to do is basically try to replicate a message. And that's about it. So if we have a look at the search service, there's quite a few things going on here, but hopefully we can muscle our way through this. So we take in the channel and the channel service and we store them on our, on our class. And then we just declare our methods. And then we have find messages here, for example, where we take in a query and a user ID. And then we grab the channels that this user is in. And then basically we're gonna do a search using the Elasticsearch client. And basically all we're gonna do here is that we're gonna declare a body. We're gonna look at that in just a moment. And then we're going to sort on the created at date. And that's about it really. Now the query itself is, um, this is fairly Elasticsearch specific. So I'm not gonna go into too many details on this because you can read up on the documentation if you're interested in searching and like Elasticsearch in general. And basically what this is going to allow us to do, I'm just declaring a query, which is going to be a Boolean query. Basically, it's going to return documents that matches these criteria that I specify here. And I've declared that I have a must clause here where it's basically I'm saying that this document needs to, it has to abide by these, uh, these specified rules. So I declare a simple query string. And basically all I'm saying is that I want you to return me documents where, the, where this query is going to match. So it can be any text, basically. It's just a string search, if you will, but used with Elasticsearch, that's actually a very powerful thing. And then I declare a filter, which is just going to return documents that for that uh, that matches this this criteria. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to declare a bunch of terms, which is just well, basically a field where I'm going to check if this field is actually within the, is matched against this. So basically I take in the channel IDs, all these IDs of channels, and I check if this document actually matches any of these channels. And then I return them because remember, the, all we want is to grab the documents that this user is actually a member of, or all the documents representing uh, things that this person is associated with. And that's about it really. Then we get back a response and that has this data structure and we loop over and then we m map all of this over to the message search results view, which is the view that we send to the client. And that's about it really. Then we have this little delete messages clause here, which is just going to well, take an ID and delete the, well, the message that has this ID. And if it this doesn't exist, we're simply going to ignore it. Because you know we don't we don't really I mean we can delete things it doesn't matter if it's there or not we don't need to throw an error for that and then we have an update which is very similar to well saving and you can see you're saving and updating is virtually the same thing here and get body all this is going to do is that it's a little helper function that I made that takes in the message view like this thing that we actually want to save. And it's just going to undefine the underscore ID field and re remove the reply messages because in our simple search functionality now, we don't really need to include all of the reply messages. That's for a later situation. I mean, all we're really allowing the user to do right now is to search over messages. We don't care about replies at this point. It's something we might want to support in the future, but for now, this is going to be good enough. And yeah, that's about it really. Then we can look at our action bar here where we have added in a few clauses where basically all we're gonna do now is that we're going to include another clause for scrolling the content to the bottom, which is gonna be scroll search results to bottom, which is basically, as you can, I mean, there's a lot of similarities between the thread component and the search results components is basically the same component. Uh, with a few minor differences. So there was a lot of copy paste for this and considering there's only two components We don't really have to make a nicer abstraction than that So here is our search results component and it's going to be very similar to well to the thread component So all it's going to do is that it's going to declare its event listener and create a reducer and then we're going to just 
well on our event it's going to check if there are like if the action that is being dispatched is setting the results and then it's just going to loop through and remove its internal elements like that are in the results component the results element which is this list here with all of our well all of our search results basically and then it's just going to create new list items and append them as needed and finally just dispatch the scroll search results to bottom action which is going to scroll the content to the bottom so whenever we open this side panel it's just going to be on the at the bottom of the list every time search the result list item nothing super fancy going on here it's just a list item takes in some well the message and just basically is going to put and create a list item that's about it really here is our index file which exports the search results and then we have our init state which is just going to be the search results themselves and here are our boilerplate actions which is just going to be this this stuff here very similar to things we've done before events and here's our reducer and we only have one case which is basically going to be oh there there was a bunch of results hey just set them on our state and yeah that's about it really here we have our header which has been slightly well, updated a little bit now so what you can see now is that we have on search or previously when we searched we just did an alert right and what we're going to do now is that we're going to set the title and then we're going to grab all of the results which is going to be through this api call here get search results and we're just going to grab whatever the user put into the input field and we're going to get the incoming results map over and create messages because hey we just assume that these are messages in the future we might want to support being able to search for more advanced things such as you know if we added file uploads and stuff like that but for now this is good enough and then we create a new search result and then we do very similar to what we did with the thread we simply create our well dispatch and then we dispatch our result well, well basically we just do the exact same thing we set the result search results dispatch those results open the action bar with our new title and our component and then we scroll it to the bottom and then we empty the empty the search field that's about it really and here we see that we've just added a name to search as well so that we can actually grab the value of the of the input and then we have our API which is well this little method here which is should feel fairly straightforward and then yeah we well here we are on the server as I said I created this little search route and finally this is the search route itself where we're actually going and grabbing all of the messages when we actually hit enter after inputting something to the search field and as you can see here all it's going to do is that it's going to grab the user session user ID from the session input the query that comes away in the query and uh, query parameter and just gonna find we're just gonna find all the messages and return it and that's exactly what's happening now so if I just do this thing here I search for something ASD or whatever something like this you can see that this is my query and here are my results and yeah that's the entire feature so we are ready to move that to ready for testing and finally we will look at having some way of handling errors and stuff going wrong basically